We don't have to use force. We can use the word. I, I, in the na- stop in the name of the law. You remember? Stop in the name of the law. And, and power. So authority. So when Jesus said, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. He said, I'm giving you the authority. You don't have to force it. You just have to speak to it. And know who you are when you speak to it. Oh, man, are you getting this tonight? When you have the key, you don't have to kick the door open. When you have a key, you don't have to crawl in through the window. When you have the key, you don't have to force something to happen. When you have the key, you just have to say, just put the key in the lock, and the key is your confession. I am healed. I am delivered. I am set free. Come on, somebody, give me a confession, amen? Amen. So I want to talk to you about going from pitiful to powerful. Amen. Anybody ready to go from pitiful to powerful? I have, you see, the, when I have the key, it says not only do I have the right to enter, I have the right to what's on the other side of the door. I have a key to my house. When I go to my house, I unlock the door, I go in. I don't have to tiptoe around. The key says I have authority. I own whatever's inside this room. This room. You need to tell the devil, devil, I got the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and I have, the, I have a access to God's blessing. I have access to God's promises. I have authority in the name, in the name of the because of the key. Number one, if we're going to go from pitiful to powerful, first of all, we have to remember who the Father is. We have to remember who the Father is, Luke 15 and 11. And he said, a man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father... Give me the share of the state that falls to me. So he divided his wealth between them. Notice how he addressed his father. Father, dad, sir, daddy, sir. You know, you know how your kids do when they're wanting something? When they don't want something, it's hey you. But when they want something, it's oh dad that I love more than anything on the face of the earth. Anybody else's kids try that? Oh, Dad, you know when they come and hug you and sit down in your lap and they're 20 years old, you know you're in trouble? Well, Timmy's 28 and then still comes and sits in my lap when he wants something. (laughs) Father, give me the, he he addressed the father with the, the respect, but with also letting him know, I know, Dad, that you have this and that it is mine. Dad, I know that there is a portion of your inheritance that belongs to me. So, Father, will you give me the portion that falls to me? We need to remember who it is we're praying to. I don't like this, hey, you, God, attitude that a lot of the church has. The lack of respect, the lack of awe, the lack of reverence. I I love and I don't know what we have. Can you put up Job 42 and 1? I'm hoping Job 42 and 1. Yeah, good. And Job answered God, I'm convinced you can do anything and everything. Nothing and no one can upset your plans. You ask, who is this muddying the water, ignorantly confusing the issue, second-guessing my purposes? I admit it. I was the one. I babbled on about things far beyond. This is the message translation. Far beyond me. Made small talk about wonders way over my head. You told me, listen, and let me do the talking. Let me ask you the question, and you give the answers. I admit I once lived by rumors of you. Now I have uh, have it all firsthand for my own eyes and ears. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I'll never do that again. I promise I'll never again live on, on crust of hearsay and crumbs of rumor. Now, you got to understand what's going on here. For four chapters, from like chapter 38 all the way to chapter 42, God is giving Job a dress down. Who is this that darkeneth counsel? Who, who are you that are questioning me and what I'm doing? And who are you? And then he starts saying, where were you when I hung the sun? Where were you when I named every one of the stars? Where were you? when I, And he spends like one whole chapter saying, where were you when I framed in the ocean and told the waters to stop here and go no further and come in and go out? Where were you? And he starts telling Job, I did. And I, he, I know when the mountain goat gives birth. And I know when the sun. Uh, and he's telling Job all this. And so for four chapters, Job's just like, 
And then Job said, time out. He said, it was me. I did a dumb thing. He said, I, I heard about you with my ears, but now I have seen the greatness of God. I've seen the God. It's, uh, what, 90, 94 million miles from the earth just to the moon, the nearest, the nearest uh, obstruction in heaven, uh, uh, the near, 94 million miles, and then to the sun, I forget how many. And, and he stretched out the heavens with the span of his hand. We have to remember who the Father is. We have to remember, he's the one that said, let there be light. There was light three days before there was a sun. He's the one that said fish. He's the one that said trees and grass. He's the one that spoke everything into existence. We have to remember who the Father is. And so we don't need to be pitiful if that's our Father. We don't, we're not pitiful. Look at someone tell them, you're not pitiful. If we could remember who the Father is and remember about what the Father is all about, we're not pitiful. So before we start anything, Jesus said, My Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. God, you own it all. The cattle of a thousand hills. The hills and the taters in the hills. You own it all. It's all yours at your, for your discretion. So I can do like the prodigal son and say, Father, it's yours. And if it's yours, it's mine. Give me mine. Give me the promises you've made to me. What it was technically in that day, the eldest son, if you had two sons, the eldest son received two-thirds of the, the inheritance. The younger son, one-third of the inheritance. So the father... The father uh, just didn't ask any questions. He just cut out one-third of what he had and gave it to the younger son, and off he went. Gathered all together and left and went to a foreign country. But he knew if he asked the father, it was rightfully his. It was promised to him. Remember I told you about the thing with the knives with Timmy. And I said, as soon as he gets old enough, he gets it, but not until he gets old enough, and one day he'll get it. It's the father's to give. But not only is it the Father's, it's already promised to me. Number two, you have to remember who you are. This is where I want to get to. Remember who you are. Look at somebody and tell them, I know who I am. Luke 15 and 18. I will get up and go to my Father and say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired men. Now, remember, that's why I wanted to go back and read the other verse when he said, How many of my Father's hired servants have bread and enough and to spare? They have bread more than they can eat. And here I perish with hunger. So then he goes to his father and said, Lord, make me like one of your hired servants who has all they want to eat, all they need to eat. But that's not the plan of God that you be a slave. Yes. Yes. That's not the plan of God that you be a beggar. I want the church to lose its beggar mentality. Oh God, please, oh please, God, please just give me, just give me, just give me the car payment, God. Lord, Lord, just give me the car. Oh, Lord, just give me, just give me a place to stay, God. Give me a cardboard box under a bridge. Lord, just give me that. No, 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 no. I'm not a slave. I'm a son. God, I don't want the car payment. I want the car paid for. You're not, God's not up there saying, oh, let's see if I can come up with enough to make your car payment. <laughs> come on, angels, pitch in. Let's see if we can make the, let's make, the, come on, angels. Go, go scrape some of that gold up and let's see if we can get together enough to make John Smith. Uh, no, that's not God. He's the Father. And I am his son. I've got to lose this. Oh, let me just have a cabin in the corner of glory. Forget it. There's no cabins in glory. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. No cabins in glory of mansions. Now, me, I would rather have a log cabin. But still, get one this side or that side. But, but still... There's no, we, you understand what I'm saying tonight? The devil's trying to tell you you don't deserve to be anything but a slave. I'm trying to tell you you are a born-again, blood-bought child of the Father. You don't sleep in the barn. You don't sleep in the field. You don't sleep in the st slave quarters. You don't even have to sleep in the, in the number eight motel. You sleep in the daddy's house because you are a child. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get excited. 
The devil wants us stuck in our past, so we'll try to be beggars with God. Oh, please, 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 oh God, please, 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 please. We are not slaves but children. Look at John 15 and 15. No longer do I call you slaves, for the slave does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends. That's important. I've called you friends. For all things that I have heard from my father, I've made known to you. You did not choose me. <laughs> While you thought the father was mad at you and cut your, your, you're dead to me. You're dead to me. You're dead to me. I'm sorry. You're dead to me. That's not what the father, the father was looking down the road every minute waiting on the prodigal to come back. You did not choose him. He chose you. And he didn't chose you to come or choose you to come crawling back on hands and knees uh, to live on cra- uh, scr- uh, crumbs and scraps. He called you to come back and be his child again. You couldn't choose him. You were dead. You couldn't choose him. You were dead. Bill, I heard Bill Johnson make a comment a couple of weeks ago that just floored me. You were talking about God's purpose to raise people to life again. It's not, it's not the, the goal, the end goal of God is not to save people. I'd like you to think a minute. The end goal of God is to fill people with himself. Part of the process is the getting saved. And we're too content getting people saved when God wants to take them to being filled. And the reason why they struggle is because they're, we stop at saved, and that's only part of the process that is truly the process he wants to take us through to fill us with himself. Because the whole thing was Adam and Eve in the garden in the cool of the day, walking and having fellowship. It wasn't just to have them in the garden and safe from the rest of the world. He wanted fellowship. So he wants not only to get us saved, he wants to get us full of himself and in relationship with him and not just saved. Is that okay? So he said, you are not slaves. You are friends. The word friends, the Greek there, phileos. Phileos means you are the dearly beloved. You are not just you are not slaves. You are the dearly beloved. You are the dearly beloved of God. We are, we are loved by him. You don't love a slave. You love your children. And so we are not slaves living on crumbs. We are God's children. Are you getting this tonight? We are settling for being a slave when Jesus so wants to make us children. Remember, so we have to remember who God is, and then we have to remember who we are. And we have to pray like the one who holds the keys. Pray like the one who holds the keys. And this is what God spoke to me. I, I, I added this just a while ago. We have to stop praying for what we already have a key to. Stop praying for what you already have the key to and use the key. Mountain, be moved. Remember when Jesus when Jesus walked up to the tomb of Lazarus? He walked up to the tomb of Lazarus. He didn't say, all right, everybody hold hands. Kumbaya, my Lord. Let's see if we can get, let's work. Let's get Lazarus up. Come on, come on, everybody. Everybody, all everybody. No, no. He walked up and said, Father, I thank you that you've already heard me. You always hear me. So that everybody here will know that it's you. I'm going to just say, Lazarus. And he took out the key. He didn't stop and hold a prayer meeting. He didn't go over and pour, pour a half of a five-gallon bucket of oil on Lazarus and shake him. He took out the key. Lazarus, come forth. Are you, you see? He didn't pray. Oh, God, please raise Lazarus. Because you know what? He had, his bones would have still been in that graveyard. Oh, God, please raise Lazarus. Oh, God, please raise Lazarus. Father, come on, Father. Father, I'm, I'm looking pretty dumb right now, Father. Come on, Father. Father, please, please. I don't want to be embarrassed. Come on, Father. Father. No, 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 no. God said, you're asking for what you've already got a key to. Man, we're going somewhere, aren't we? You're asking me to open the door, and I already gave you the key to the door. You're asking me to heal what I've already healed. Now take out your key. I forbid I permit, I forbid, I permit, 
I forbid that spirit to come into my house. I permit the, the spirit of the Lord to set free. You've already got the key. Stop asking for what you've got the key to. Oh, please give me the car. Please give me the car. You got the key. Anybody with me still? Yes. Don't settle for pitiful when you are powerful. Matthew 6 and 9, pray then this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Pray powerful prayers. And once you've prayed and, and you feel like God has given you the key, you have to speak the key. You have to say to this mountain, be moved. You have to say to the tree, be plucked up by the roots. For if you believe in your heart and don't doubt, you have whatever you well, okay, we got five people. If you believe in your heart and don't doubt, you have whatever you say. S-A-Y, say. Say, not pray. Say. But I don't want to look dumb. I'd rather take a chance of looking dumb and get them delivered and healed and set free than to keep my mouth shut and let them die. Is your pride more important than their soul? No. Is our pride more important than our health? No. We got to get some holy boldness and take a chance. Oh, but I ain't never seen nobody do that before. <laughs> I, I bet that's what everybody was saying at Lazarus' grave, too. You know, I was talking about the critics. Can you imagine those people when you said, take away the stone? Martha said, he stinks. He's rotten. He stinks. Take away the stone. Oh, man, this guy's really lost it now. I knew he was weird. But now he's, now he's apocalypse, zombie apocalypse, you know. He's really weird now. But Jesus, he wasn't worried about what the critics said. He said, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to take out the key. Come forth, Lazarus. And he said to Lazarus, and if you look at the miracles that Jesus did... He didn't spend a lot of time praying at the point of the miracle. When they brought the demon-possessed son, the demon-possessed boy to him, and the disciples had that prayer meeting and, and used a gallon of oil, whatever they did, tried to catch and nothing happened. They had nothing happened. Brought him to Jesus. He said, how long has this been bothering him? Oh, ever since he was a youth, it's been trying to destroy him. Okay, all right, spirit, come out. Didn't have prayer. He just took out the key. Why? Because he had been praying. Thank you. He was praying before he got to the point. Yes, that's good, that's good. He knew what keys were in his pocket before he got there. See, our problem is we, oh, we wait till we're going under for the third time and then try to bubble out of prayer. Help me, Lord. No, 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 no. you got to be praying in the calm so you can pull out the key in the storm. In the storm, Jesus gets there, Father in Jesus, in my name, make the storm go away. No, he said, hold your peace. He had the keys. And he used the keys. Why? Because he knew in private time. It is when you, when you have, when you have uh, the private time with God that the power comes in public. Yes. Private time with God brings power in public. Amen. Don't try. Don't you try to raise Lazarus if you ain't been in the closet. Come forth, Lazarus. Why ain't he coming forth? Because God hadn't heard you since 1976. key is to start speaking it. Yes. Start prophesying into people. Yes. Start speaking into people. Yes. Yes. Start speaking the word of God. Get a holy bold. I don't mean just be goofy. I mean speak something you have conviction about that God is going to do it. Yes. God is going to bring your son home. He is going to bring your daughter home. He is going to heal. He is going to deliver. He is going to set free. I speak it in the name of Jesus. I've already been in the prayer closet. Now I'm in public and I'm pulling out my key. We have the keys. We pull out the keys. Hebrews 4 and 16 is not in your notes. Write it down. Hebrews 4 and 16. 
Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace so that we may receive mercy and find grace and help, uh, help to help in the time of need. He said, let us come boldly into the throne of God in prayer time so that when the need arises, we have the key. <laughs> Man, the devil is hating this. That's why he tried his best to keep you at home tonight. That's why you had such a day you had. Because the devil didn't want you to come up here and realize the keys you had on your ring. The keys to the kingdom in your confession. Who do men say that I am? Oh, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah. Who do you say that I am? You are Christ, son of the living God. Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, flesh and blood is not revealed as you, but the Father which is in heaven. And I say that thou art Peter, but upon this rock I will build my church. What rock? The confession. Yes, yes, right. The confession in God that you've made. Therefore, I give to you, the, I will give you, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. That whatever has been, whatever you permit on earth will have been permitted in heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will have been forbidden in heaven. I will give you the key. When will you give me the keys? When I leave this earth and go back to my father, I'll give you the keys. And so he gave them and we have them. And so when we're willing to make that confession that only God gives. We are carrying the keys. And it may not look like what we think it looked like. All right, I got to hurry. Is this okay? Yeah. Okay, I'm coming down. Come down. Come down. The other part of it is we got to know who God is. We got to know who I am. Somebody say, I'm not a slave. Not a slave. I'm a child, I'm a child. Of, the king. of the king. I'm not a slave. Not I'm a child of the king. Not I'm not a slave. Not a I'm a child of the king. Whatever I ask, I get, because I'm a child of the king. Slave has to wait till they get it. They give him water. Child of the king goes and gets water whenever he wants water. Slave has to wait till they tell him he can go to bed. Child of the king goes to bed when he gets good and ready. Anybody getting this? The devil wants to keep us pitiful when God wants to keep us powerful. Walk in consistency. Luke 15 and 31. Drop down. Right before where Mel started preaching. And he said to him, now you remember the story, they, they brings him in, he said, bring my robe, bring my ring, bring my sandals or my shoes, bring the fatted calf, and they killed the fatted calf and had a barbecue, threw a party, glory to God. T-bone steak, yes, yes. <laughs> New York strip. About that thick. <laughs> Barbecued. Anyway, so, yeah, what was that? Uh, <laughs> glory to God. And it ain't even the fast. They threw, him a and they threw him a party, and the son comes in from the field. The older son, who'd been with his dad, comes in from the field and said, What's the sound of this music? And what's all these people dancing in church about? He said, Well, your son, your brother, who was dead, is now alive again, and your dad's throwing a party. He said, well, good night. That's, and they got mad and wouldn't even go in. So his daddy comes out and said, Son, it's only right that we do this because your brother who was dead is alive again. But even when he was dead, he was still a son. Even when he was out there in the, the father's heart, he was still the son. The father still loved him. You know that God loves the backslider. He, he, he said, I'm married to the backslider. He still loves it. Don't, 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 you, don't, don't, you, don't you dare think that God will never forgive you. He's not a man that way. Now, I'm telling you, we can do things that will incur his wrath. We can do things to incur his wrath. We can do things and get out from under his protection, and the enemy will drop a house on you. No, 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 no. You better stay in the Father's house. Okay, anyway. So we're, we're at that part of the story. So, and he said to him, Son, you've been with me. You've always been with me. All that is mine is yours. The, the blessing of consistency is the longer we consistently serve the Father. Now, let me, let me make a distinction here. There's a difference in the servant and the slave. The enemy wants you to think you're a slave, which is a, a person who is made to do 
the menial and do the, the a servant is someone who serves uh, you serve your family every man and woman that goes to work you're serving your family going to work in that job and bringing home a paycheck you're serving serving is doing is sacrificing yourself to help someone else so he said you have served with me you've been my servant you've been here working with me all this time and all that i have is is yours we see the classic story of blessing without boundaries. First, I want to talk about this. Luke 15 and 13. Not many days later, the younger, after the younger son told his dad to give him all this stuff, he gathered everything together, went out and journeyed to a distant country, and there he squandered his estate on loose living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine occurred in that country, and he began to be impoverished. Here's why the consistency of walking with God is so important. How many times have we seen people who are blessed only to see their blessing taken away? We've seen musicians, uh, uh, what's his name? You can't touch this, you know. Dun, 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 dun. MC, Hammer. MC Hammer. Oh, yeah, man. Cool, so cool. Oh, yeah, I don't know who I'm talking about. Bless your heart. You're so holy. Let's talk about Carmen. MC Hammer. And they said it wasn't long. He didn't have two nickels to rub together because he wasted he didn't plan for the future. And we see so many people who are blessed beyond their character. Sports, sports men and women who've made millions of dollars out working at, you know, Walmart. Because they, they, they're, they, here's the problem. If God allows us to be blessed when there are cracks in the foundation, the weight of the blessing will enlarge the cracks. If he blesses us while there are cracks in the foundation, the weight of his blessing enlarges the crack. So God doesn't give us all of our blessing at once. He allows us to grow into our blessing. The, 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 the blessing of consistently walking with him is we grow and are able to take more blessing till we get to the point that God can, can trust you to the point to say, all that I have is yours. But we have to walk consistently to get to that place. Because, see, you got some people who are out there in a foreign country living like the prodigal, and then they come in, and in a month, they want to know why all that he has is not theirs. Because the cracks in your foundation will explode and will implode if he blesses you with all of that too soon. So he has to bless us slowly so that we can take it. Are you with me still? Yes. And so the prodigal son went and wasted it all, wound up with nothing, and wound up joining himself to a citizen of the far country. The cracks of the foundation with the heavy blessings will break. Third, uh, uh, third John chapter 1, verse 2. Beloved, I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health as your soul prospers. For I was very glad when brethren came and testified of your truth, that is, how you were walking in truth. I have no greater joy than this, to hear that my children are walking in truth. He said, God wants to bless and prosper you, but he cannot do it until your, your soul prospers. Now, that word soul in the original, and I'm, I'm coming to the end, but it means the mind or the heart. God said, or, or, or John said, God desires to put his whole blessing on you. He desires that all he has be yours, but he can't give you that before your mind and your heart mature to the place that it won't destroy you. If he gives it all to you at first, you'll be like the prodigal, and in six months it'll all be gone, and you'll be destroyed. So he said, I want to prosper you and bless you, but I can only do it as you mentally and spiritually grow to the point that you don't implode with it. Yes. Yes. Amen? But one day, one day, you just keep on doing what you're doing, and the Father's going to say, all that is mine yes, is yours. You want a cow? Go get a cow. You want a Lexus? Go get a Lexus. Because I know now you won't worship the Lexus. Boy, I'm teaching good tonight. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm bold. No, he don't, he don't want me pitiful. He wants me powerful. He wants to bless me. Amen? All right, we've got we to wind this up somewhere. 
as we walk in truth. He said, I have no greater joy than to hear that you walk in truth. As we walk in truth, he is able to hand us more keys to the kingdom. John 15 and 6. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up. And they gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. He said, if we do not stay in the word and stay uh, in God, then we, the enemy will come and catch us away and wither it up. And he will put us in the fire. Not talking about hell. He's talking about going through hell on earth. And the cracks will get bigger. So get them and they'll be burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this that you bear much fruit, so prove to be my disciples. Not just Christians, my disciples. How am I a disciple? When you abide in me and my words abide in you. How do I abide in him? In the beginning was the And the word was with God and the word was... So to abide in him, I abide in his word, and his word abides in me. They've got a show coming on TV. Have you seen it um, where the guy said he's going to have a kid or something, and so he's going to live his whole life strictly by the Bible? I would like to think that that was going to be good, but I'm not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Came from Hollywood, so that right there tells you. But it's, it's just something verse by verse or something like that, but but. If they could just understand how much power and truth there is of that. If you did live your life by the word. Walking in, in the word. Walking in Proverbs. Walking in, walking in the word. And, and doing what we're hearing from the word. He said, if you abide in me, then you have the keys. Then you'll have enough of the wisdom of God to know what to say. And see things turn around and change. Yeah. Matthew 16 and 19. Everybody say, Matthew 16. 19. What is it? Matthew. And I will, I, will, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven that whatever you bind, whatever you, whatever you forbid on earth will have been forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit on earth will have been permitted or loose in heaven. We got we to use these keys. You got to start speaking life into people. You got to start speaking life. You got to start prophesying to things. Oh, you will live. You will run. You will work. Oh, sink, you will work. Oh, water, you will be good. Let me finish with this. It's not in your notes, but I'll finish with this. Jesus, when they came to Jesus and they said, We've got 5,000 men plus women and children here, and they're all hungry. And, and, and said, uh, What are we going to do? And Jesus said, What you got? He said, oh, <laughs> I love Peter. Oh, we got five loaves and two fish. Okay, that might feed one man. It was really for a kid. But Peter, we got one, five loaves and two fish. That's enough. That's enough. Uh, maybe you missed the calculations that we gave you, Jesus. You know, after all, Judas was the money keeper. He, math may not have been your strong suit. The Bible said Jesus took it. And did what? Broke it. Well, before he broke it, what did he do? He what? He took it and he blessed it and he broke it. See, here's what we do. We took it and say, well, this ain't going to do it. This ain't enough. Put this over there and hide it. When I get hungry, you know, we curse it. We have the key. And we misuse the key. We curse it. Wow. Jesus said, it's enough. There are 5,000 plus women and children fish sandwiches. <laughs> Not only that, we took up 12 bushel baskets. Yeah. Why? Because he took the key and blessed instead of cursed. Lazarus, come forth. What did he do? He used the key. You and I have the key. We got to start blessing things and stop cursing things. <laughs> I'm working on one now. I'll just get a little transplant parent, will you? You ever drop your phone? I was in the hospital with dad and was carrying all this stuff up from the ER up to his room. Blah, 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 and I had my phone trying to talk. And, and it just it looked, it looked like Aaron Rodgers throwing a Hail Mary. And it just... 
And I said, oh, shoot. And I said, nope, nope. Thank you, God, it's not. Thank you, Lord, it's fine. It's, it's, it's fine, God. Thank you, Lord. I got to show you. Thank you, Lord, it's fine. And I, I, before it could hit the ground, because it, it was like it was in the air for like 16 minutes. <laughs> and it hit the hospital floor, and it sounded like a gun went off. And my case flew all to pieces, and my phone don't have a scratch on it. God said, bless it instead of curse it. Because I tell you, cursing it did come to mind. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, yeah, I told you to get transparent. I, I, you know, first thing, I'm, oh, man, that thing's going to be in one gazillion pieces. And I just, I just had to put a screen on it. And I'm gonna put, no, 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 no. So thank you, Lord. It's okay. When, when you get close, <laughs> when, you get in, when you get into a situation, just bless it. Yeah. Use your key. Yeah. Stop saying, oh, this has got to be cancer. This has got to be a heart attack. You know, some people break out in a pimple. and Oh, I'm dying. This has got to be melanoma or whatever it is. It ain't melanoma. It's, it's acne. <laughs> Thank you, God. I'm going through puberty again. Thank you, God. I'm like a teenager again. <laughs> bless it and don't curse it. Bless people and don't curse them. I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind is bound. Whatever you loose is loose. Use your key. Come on, stand up on your feet and give God praise. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your word tonight. I thank you for your word tonight. I thank you for the keys to the kingdom of heaven. That what we permit is permitted, but what we forbid is forbidden. I thank you for this congregation tonight. I thank you for the miracles that are going to take place. We are not pitiful. We are powerful. We are not slaves. We are sons and daughters. Hallelujah. You love us. God, you've just been sitting around. You've been sitting there waiting on us to come back. You've been reaching out to us. You've been calling for us. Oh, not only us, but those that we love that are away. You're calling for them, God. Call them home in Jesus' name. I bless them. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Let this word not leave us, but let us leave here today convinced that we're powerful and not pitiful. Let us pray prayers not out of fear, not out of anxiety, not out of depression, not out of despair, but let us pray prayers of children asking their father in all assurance that it's going to come to pass. And then we speak it out with the keys to the kingdom of heaven in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. Go to somebody and bless them. God bless you.